This is Noelle from HeatSeek, and you're watching Visual Caffeine. What's up everybody peace this is peds from visual caffeine and hip-hop is a community or community culture community-based culture and that means that you should know what's going on in your community whether it's the whole borough or your five block radius and in order to help uh, help us understand some of the uh, issues with housing in brooklyn we've invited our friend noel from heat seek and this is a very important service so i'm going to ask some questions but let her speak a lot because there's a lot of housing problems in Brooklyn. Yes, there are. <laughs> yes, especially with heat. When people play with heat, hot water, it's just not good. So this young sister here has a program called Heat Seek. And uh, what, what exactly is Heat Seek? So we're a nonprofit. We work with tenants who are not getting heat in their apartments in the wintertime. Okay. Oftentimes, you know, they've got slumlords who are trying to freeze them out of right. their apartments. Um, it's... Turns out it's the number one complaint that comes into 311 wow. in the winter. There were like 217,000 heat complaints last year. Now, is that just in Brooklyn or is that all the boroughs? That's throughout the whole city, but okay. Brooklyn and the South Bronx are really the, the areas where you see the most complaints I, coming. I from. wonder what you mean, Sobo? <laughs> Sobo and, uh, you know, bed is now Clayton Hills. Um, but Heat Seek, it's very important um, to monitor your, your heat, not, necessi not necessarily by the landlord, Right. but by an independent source. Right. Because we've had experiences where they've told us that our apartment is 70 degrees, but I'm wearing a sweatshirt. Um, can you build on that? Like, yeah, you know, totally. I, well, well, what exactly services do you provide? Right. So one of the big problems with sort of proving that you don't have heat is it's totally a he said, she said argument, just right. like you were saying. And because of that, we wanted to provide a way for folks to prove mm -hmm via a third-party independent organization right. that comes in and documents the temperature, um, prove that, you know, the landlord is not being truthful and you're not getting heat in your apartment. Right. And so what we did is we built um, a little temperature sensor. Okay. Um, my co-founder has a background in technology, oh, so okay. he was able to do that. Um, and it just takes a temperature reading every hour and provides this, like, really comprehensive log of what the temperature is in your apartment and whether right. or not it's in violation. And it works because we ha I have it in my house. I wouldn't tell you about something that, you know, I wouldn't do myself. Uh, we interviewed Ewing Athletics because I support Ewing Athletics. I wear them. We do this because we've had it in our apartment. It works. And, you know, she's really helped us out. Because our landlord has been a little, you know, under under the truth about heat repairs and stuff like that. So this service is very important. Now, people that are like, well, I'm, I don't have money. I'm not rich. Can they still get this service from you? Totally. So that's one of the reasons we're a nonprofit instead mm -hmm. of just a regular for-profit company. Right. It's because we know that this is a problem that faces a lot of New Yorkers, but it disproportionately impacts lower-income New Yorkers, mm. uh, New Yorkers in communities of color. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's, we don't think it's right that someone should both be facing the problem of not having heat and right. now have to go out and pay 150 or 200 bucks to try to prove wow. that their experience is real and that they need their landlord to provide heat, right? If HPD were doing the job it was, right. you know, meant to do, they would be coming out and verifying what the temperature is. And with, with HPD, they say that, you know, you can call them and ask for, you know, the complaint to the landlords, but they actually tell the landlords before they get there. Right. So your heat may be on that day. Right. So with the heat seek, it circumvents that. Right. Well, because it's 24-7, right? right? So every single hour, it's going to take a temperature reading. It's going to send that temperature data up to our servers. Mm -hmm. So you end up with an hourly temperature log right. that's your indoor temperature, the outdoor temperature, the time of day, and the date. And then we calculate for you whether or not 
if an HPD inspector were to show up at that moment when we took the temperature reading, mm -hmm. whether or not your building would be in violation of the housing code. Oh, wow, that, that's what's up. And it doesn't take that long. It's not intrusive. You were in, a, in our house for 10, 15 minutes. And, you know, I t tried to talk your, your ear off. No, it was great. But, <laughs> but it was like it was like 10, 15 minutes at the most. You get an email like the next day or, you know, if it's Friday, you'll get it Monday. Do your password and you have your own record so that these landlords can't step on your neck, basically. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen in your in your travels throughout Brooklyn or whatever, have you seen this program actually make the landlords turn the heat on? Like, yeah. I'm not I'm not saying that your service doesn't work, but have you seen results? from? Yeah. This? So, I mean, I think you make a really good point, which is mm -hmm. that, like, this is a really complicated issue to get solved. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can start a court case, but they tend to drag on. And so then it's right. summer. And so it can be really challenging to get results quickly. Mm -hmm. But yes, we've totally seen folks get results right. uh, either through court or actually, you know, we've done things like have a press conference in front of the building, do a little public shaming of the landlord. Right, and right. all of a sudden they have the best winter heat wise that they've ever had. It's right. a shame. Yeah. Like we're, we're dealing in my building, we're de dealing with this thing called MCI, mm -hmm. which is basically that the landlord is asking the tenants to pay to improve their property. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they add money to your rent mm -hmm. for each room. Right. In my case, it would be $150 tacked onto your rent. Mm -hmm. to pay for repairs that they should have done. Yes. Is this being done all over the city or just in all Brooklyn? All over or? the place. No, totally. And that's one of the things that as a citywide organization, mm -hmm. you know, we work in all the boroughs, we get to see this isn't just a problem that impacts Brooklyn or, you know, the South Bronx or, mm -hmm. or one particular neighborhood. This is something that folks, bad landlords are doing all over the city. Um, and so one of the things we hope to do is to sort of take that bird's eye view and be able right. to say, you're not alone. This is not just happening to you. This is actually happening and it's on purpose. It's a, a concerted effort that some of these landlords are making to try to drive out rent stabilized tenants so they can turn those apartments into luxury apartments. Peace, peace, respect everybody. It's your boy John Robinson, Visual Caffeine. First and foremost, we want to say shout outs and big thanks to everyone who's been supporting VizCaf.com, been supporting the IG page. We love y'all for that. This year, we have tons of new episodes coming, so subscribe to us on YouTube. We also got a plethora of past episodes. I'm talking interviews with Bob Power, interviews with VJ Ralph McDaniels, Interviews with uh, Scheme, Thurston Howe III, Sadat X, and so many others that are right there on our YouTube channel. Check us out on YouTube, search for us, Visual Caffeine, subscribe to our channel, the information's right here. We hope to see you in this new year, and definitely look out for more and more episodes of VizCaf in this new year too. Peace and respect, much love. A lot of these building tenant organizations, are they turning more towards co-ops or like what exactly can people do to fight landlords' power like that? Is it, it Does it always work to go to your elected official or is that a good idea or... You know. So it kind of depends on your situation, right? Okay. Like we don't want to ever tell someone, mm -hmm. do this thing if they feel like it's going to negatively impact their situation. Okay. So a good example of that is like if you're undocumented, we're not going to tell you, right. hey, go knock on someone's door or like, you know, put yourself at risk. We don't want anyone doing that. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that we've seen that are really effective can be if you have a tenants association mm -hmm. in your building. Uh, to do some kind of media campaign or to get the right. word out, right? Because then it's not just you as the individual tenant, it's your whole building. Right. So it's harder for a landlord to come and retaliate against you. And they can't retaliate, right? Could, could, technically, right, but technically. they also can't not provide heat. Right, right, exactly, exactly. So it's, you know, <laughs> you got to go out there and struggle for what you what you want. Yeah. It's terrible that, you know, like we got to pay for repairs, repairs on property that's not ours. Right, totally. And you know. then, you know, so you're talking about uh, building level repairs right. that they're doing, the MCIs, but there's also something called the individual apartment oh, repairs. Wow. And that, for that, I could be misspeaking, and so I'll, I'll just put that out there, but I'm pretty sure landlords don't even have to provide receipts to, like, prove what kind of work they've done. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's just, like, 
full of fraud. Well, we actually requested that. You can get like apartment history. There's a lot of information you can get out there. It's not going to be given to you, unfortunately. Um, it's really hard to find out where... Well, because the state and in some ways the city have a real interest in you not finding it out, right? right? They don't want you to know that you right. have the right to a lease renewal or that you're in a rent-stabilized apartment right. or that you shouldn't be paying market rate. But you can request your rental history. Mm -hmm. There's a, a website called amirentstabilized.com, I believe. Um, and you know you can also write, uh, send an email directly to DHCR, which right. is the state agency that handles rent stabilization. You can find out what your rental history is, which means you can find out from the time the building was certified or mm -hmm. registered, uh, all the way forward, what has every tenant paid in rent. You're wow. legally entitled yeah. to, to that information. We, we found out, when we did that, we found out that there were leaks in our apartment since 1998. Mm -hmm. And they didn't fix it until two years ago. And we've been living there 12 years, and there were leaks almost to the day. Right. You know, and then they fixed the roof, and they don't take into consideration I had to spend all night mopping, and, you know, it almost ruined my computer at one time. And uh, we were told, well, you can move. That was the response. And it's like, okay, so now they re repair the ceiling. They don't give us receipts. We had to request that. Mm -hmm. from, I think it was 311 or something. We requested all of that. And we find out, you know, they did the work, they gave you receipts, but we're paying for it. Mm -hmm. You know, we have problems with the elevator. Luckily, I, I can't complain too much. We're not as bad as some of these apartments. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, you know, me and my wife stood up. We, we created a tenants organization. So we're seeing progress. It does work. Yes. We might not win on the, you know, MCI, but we met with the landlord and surprisingly, we started getting repairs done. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, the heat see, heat seek is such an important thing because we got to take the power back. Absolutely, and like, it drives me nuts that the folks who are facing the problem are the ones who are expected to jump through all the hoops to right. get it solved. It should be easier for you to get this problem right. solved right. than it is for your landlord to break the law. Right. And so, you know, having the temperature sensor that. You set it and forget it, right. right? Like you put it on the wall, it does its thing, it collects all the data, and then all you have to do is download that data and figure out how you want to use it to advocate mm -hmm. for yourself. And it, she puts tape on there made so that if you cut it or try and mess with it, it'll show. So it, it's not like they're just doing things to, you know, to put it bluntly to screw landlords. They're actually trying to get people's rights taken care of me well, you know we're not in the business of trying to manipulate the data one way or the other right, because right, exactly we only have credibility if we are seen as a neutral third party exactly. that's just objectively collecting the temperature in in the, the apartment yeah. and so we won't do things like right. put the temperature sensor on an outside wall or right next to a window right. or you know we we go through a lot of uh, trouble to make sure that the the data that we collect is accurate they do their uh in, in, in independent investigation like <laughs> Mueller's supposed to so yeah. you could call it a Mueller of, of <laughs> Mueller of a hot, you know hot 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 heat in your apartment right but yeah I mean it's such an important thing and how can people reach you yeah so we have a website it's heatseek.org like a heat seeking missile mm -hmm. um info at heatseek.org is the email address okay uh, I think if you Google Noel, it'll probably come up. Noel Francois or Heatseek, it'll huh? come up for sure. Okay. Um, you know, reach out. We look for, uh, you know, we, we definitely do some vetting. Unfortunately, we don't have as many sensors mm -hmm. as we do sort of incoming requests. Right. So we have to sort of figure out, okay, do you have a tenant association? Do you already have a lawyer that's working on your case? None of these are... Um, you know, deal breakers by right. any means, but we want to gather some information about sort of how long this has been an issue in your building. What steps have you taken so far? Have you been calling through on one? If not, is it because there's a good reason why you're not calling, right? Like you're undocumented or something, you don't want your name on that. That's totally fine. We just want to understand like, how can we best help? And are you actually a good candidate for uh, heat seek, right? Like we've had situations mm -hmm. where, um, you know, I'll give a really quick example. Sure. It they had the the landlord had ripped the heating system entirely out of the building. There was absolutely wow. no heat happening. But when they got to housing court, and the tenant's land uh, lawyer and the landlord's lawyer were arguing back and forth, what they were arguing about wasn't is it too cold or is it not too cold. Mm -hmm. What they were arguing about was access dates. The landlord was saying, "You guys won't let me in to fix the heat," and the tenants were all saying. 
Yeah, because you're trying to install this electric heating system that we're gonna have to pay the electric right. bill for, and we can't afford that, and you're passing all the cost to us, even though we're rent-stabilized tenants, and our heat is supposed to be included in our rent. So right. sometimes temperature data is not the thing that you need in order mm -hmm. to be able to advocate for yourself. And so we'll help you work through whether having a sensor is actually gonna be the thing that's gonna help you. Right, but you need to, you need to get organized. Knock on your neighbor's doors. Yeah. I got a six, uh, our apartment building is six stories and I've never been past the first floor because I'm not the most social. But because of this, I met everybody in our apartment building. We've organized, we have uh, three heat seek, heat, heat seek devices in our building in different floors to get different readings. And you know, it's a take back the power, take back the power. That's basically what we want. Now, 311 you mentioned, mm -hmm. is that really a good, like do they respond? Is that something that you could rely on or is it just you want paperwork behind it? I mean, not to get you in trouble or nothing. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've heard lots of different experiences that okay. folks have had with 311, but my personal opinion is mm -hmm. it's good to have a paper trail, right? right. And they count every single time that you call 311 and make a complaint about the heat, it shows up on the HPD page. Right. So you're leaving sort of a, a, a paper trail over time that shows like this is not a new issue mm -hmm. and it's not like I've been sitting here doing nothing about it. I've been trying to get this fixed. Right. And then whether or not you actually get a violation when an inspector comes out from HPD is is important, but, mm -hmm. but it's also important to have that paper trail. Oh, that's, that's, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, that's what's up. Tell us where we can get information again. The yeah. website, we'll put it down down below, but let people know how to get yeah. in touch. So it's heatseek.org is our website. Um, you can email me at info at heatseek.org. And uh, if you Google HeatSeek, you'll be able to find it. The one other thing I wanted to say mm -hmm. is, you know, we are a small organization, but we're part of this like network and coalition of housing right. organizations in New York City. So, you know, while we are citywide and we focus specifically on heat, if you are having other challenges in your apartment, leaks or mold or mm. repairs that you need done, it's very likely that there is a tenant organization, uh, it's very likely that there are legal service providers that do pro bono work in your neighborhood. And so one other really great website to check out is um, justfix.nyc, like J-U-S-T-F-I-X dot N-Y-C. Um, they are another organization that um, does sort of citywide tenant organizing, um, and they'll help you document anything you can take a photo of in your apartment uh, that, that is a repair that you need done, right? So if you have a leak, take a photo of it. You can upload it to their site. Um, it's all private. Your, your data is protected. Um, but they also have this really great thing that is a resource directory. And so if you put in your address and say, yes, I'm rent stabilized or no, I'm not, or I'm, I'm receiving these benefits or not these, they'll help tailor uh, uh, search results that will pull up the lawyers that they think might represent you pro bono if they exist, the tenant organization that's doing tenant organizing in your neighborhood. So if you're not sure where to start, that's a really good place to start to be able to figure out like who's doing this kind of work in my neighborhood and who can I connect with. And another site, what is uh, who owns what? Yes. Who owns what will tell you a lot of information about your uh, building, about who owns your building, not the just the LLC. The but violations, all of that. Yes. The violations, whether or not your building has been losing rent-stabilized apartments, yep. how many evictions have been happening mm -hmm. in your building over time. Um, and the really cool thing is it will tell you, it'll, it'll make a good guess as to who owns your building and what other buildings that owner owns, right. right? So you can start to talk to if if he owns or she owns a building down the street from yours. Right. Go find out if they're also having heating issues, right. right? And then you can build a tenant organization that is based off of everyone who lives in that landlord's portfolio rather than just your one building. And it's another way to, to continue to build power and bring people together. Right. We, we found it. We looked it up. Uh, we found out that our management company owns, I think it's 16 buildings. Mm-hmm. And they're all basically in a group area and a lot of violations. Yeah. I think they found, cause, uh, so Just Fix, um, that organization I was talking about, they also made Who Owns What. Um, they found the average portfolio size is like 50 or above yeah. buildings. Yeah. And they also show other portfolios like the Kushner Group. Mm -hmm. They own a lot of buildings in Brooklyn and Manhattan. Yeah. And they're doing dirty stuff. Yeah. So the, they always say knowledge is, is the key. They're not going to give it to you, so you got to look. 
And believe me, me and my wife got other things to do, but we thought that we were tired of getting taken advantage of, so we just started looking. Yeah. We got in a hold of the, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, Tenants Association at Clinton Hills. Ten Crown Heights Tenant Crown Union. Crown Heights, yes, yeah. yes. We got in, in, t in touch with them on Facebook. Oh, we great. Just we just reached out to a group about bed -Stuy, Yeah. and they responded. Mm -hmm. So we started from there, and then it, it built on there. And shout out to Sam. She helped us out a lot. She's great. Yeah, she's, she's the one that got in touch yeah, with me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's great. And um, there are a lot of people out there that are willing to help. And all you got to do is put down your guard, sit down with people, and be willing to listen. And you'll get all the information from young sisters like this. They're, they're really trying to make a change. And they need to be supported. So give the site again. We yep. want to make sure everybody gets the information. It's heatseek.org. H-E-A-T-S-E-E-K dot O-R-G. Noel, yeah. I'm gonna ask you some other questions. Sure. What kind of music you like? Ooh, I like a lot of different kinds of music. Okay. Um, I don't know. I've been listening. <laughs> don't <laughs> laugh at me. <laughs> it's a hard question. Um, what have I been what listening genre? to? What genre? How's that? What, what genre makes you makes you move? Makes you groove? makes me move. Yeah. Ooh, we've recently gotten into this is uh, a little random, but uh -huh. there's a great used record store down the street from oh, our wow. place. Okay, uh, so you like vinyl? It's called Human Head. Yeah. Okay. So we've been going in in the two and five dollar bins. They've that. got a lot of um, what is it? Uh, like jazz, mm, blues, okay. and then like uh, Latino. I don't know what you would call it like, like latin jazz yeah 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 okay, yeah yeah, okay, yeah cool yeah we like that too that that's what's up vinyl is the best yeah vinyl's but you'd be surprised some of the best uh hip-hop songs come from the two dollar bins yeah you know what totally. i mean like you, you gotta know all music not just one type of music oh my god totally yeah you know? i'm very lucky i have three roommates and they all have very different tastes in music so i get to benefit <laughs> from their well, taste that's as what's well. up that's what's up yeah. that's cool that's cool so jazz that's i mean that, yeah. yeah especially in the <laughs> winter just yeah <laughs> well we won't get into you were going like this. we won't get into all of that but that's what's up noel it's been a pleasure yeah keep doing what you're doing we need your help thank you you know you're doing the right thing and just keep keep up man noel from heat seek this is visual caffeine saying peace thank you